Hi everyone and welcome to my very first series of YouTube videos dedicated to performance in React. Today I want to talk with you about re-renders. Re-renders is one of the most important topics when it comes to performance and they are crucial to understand when writing performance sensitive applications. In this video I want to take a look at what is re-render and why should we care about them. Uh, what can cause a component to re-render and also look into one of the biggest re-render myths. Okay, so what is re-render and why should we care about them? When talking about React performance, there are two major stages that we need to care about. Uh, we have initial render. It happens when a component first mounted and then appears on the screen. And then we have a re-render. It's second and any consecutive render of a component that has already been mounted. And now it just needs to refresh itself. Re-render only happens when React needs to update the app with some new data. Usually this is a result of a user interacting with the page or a result of some external data coming through, either through a asynchronous request or uh, some subscription model. Non-interactive apps that don't have any asynchronous data updates or user interacting with them will never have to update themselves. And as a result, they will never have to re-render and never have to care about re-render's performance optimizations. Re-render is a crucial part of React lifecycle and not something that you would want to get rid of. Unnecessary re-render though is a completely different story. Imagine a complicated page with hundreds of components and then input field somewhere at the bottom of a component hierarchy, somewhere here. If you type something in that field, you would expect this component to react with what exactly, to what exactly I am typing. You would expect it, uh, uh, therefore, to re-render itself. The last thing that you would uh, expect, though, and uh, you would want is the entire page to re-render itself on every keystroke. This is an example of what is called unnecessary re-render. And in big applications, those can be really bad. They can make your experience to appear laggy. Uh, it can cause your app to appear slow or even unresponsive. How bad can it be? It can be as bad as that. No user will describe your app as blazing fast if a simple dialogue appears uh, with one second delay, or if you have to wait for a second after every keystroke when typing something in a form. And creating uh, bad experiences like this, unfortunately, is very easy. It's just uh, a few bad patterns here and there, and then on every um, re-render, your app just freezes. So check this out. I implemented a very simple app for this pr uh, presentation. The app only renders a list of components, list of countries, and it has just a few interactive buttons that allow you to select a country or toggle dark theme on and off. The code, the code is pretty much the same, but notice how smooth uh, and uh, sleek the experience is on the right and how laggy and junky and just bad it is on the left. All of this happens because um, the app on the left is implemented with just a few bad patterns and unnecessarily re-renders uh, the entire page uh, on every interaction. The app on the right, uh, on the other hand, re-renders only components that are necessary and the rest of the app is not changing. But before talking about how to fix unnecessary re-renders like this, let's first understand how exactly they happen. What can cause a component to re-render itself? Well, it all starts with the state. Take a look at the, this screen, for example. This code is probably familiar to anyone who spent any time with React. We have a simple component and this component manages some state. At some point, something like a button callback will trigger the set, set state function, state will be updated, and then the entire component will update itself, which means re-renders. State is the initial source of all re-renders. That's why it looks so important and in a crown. Uh, state is what makes the app uh, actually interactive. Without state changes, there will be no interactivity and as a result, no re-renders. 
Um, so uh, after state update happens, nice next step for React would be um, to propagate this update further beyond this particular component, which leads me to the next reason for a component um, to re-render itself, because its parent re-renders. You see, when React updates uh, components, it does it recursively from top to, uh, top to bottom of the component's tree hierarchy. It starts with the component with the state. Um, if it has children, it will re-render those children. If those children have uh, children as well, it will re-render them and so on and so forth until the entire tree of components is re-rendered. The simplest code to represent this situation is this. We have a parent component, it renders some child component. If uh, this parent component re-renders for some reason, then its child component also will re-render. If we visualize it uh, with the help of um, pictures, it will be a tree of, of components, a component with the state update sitting somewhere at the very top. Uh, it re-renders itself, and then uh, this re-render trigger re-renders of all of its children. Each child will re-render its children, and then entire tree just re-renders. State updates and those updates uh, propagate, propagating uh, recursively to children are two major reasons for components to re-render. There is uh, also actually a third one that sits a little bit uh, outside of those on the side, context updates. Con context or any other state management library uh, like Redux operate outside of standard uh, React components hierarchy. And they are very convenient when you need to bypass the hierarchy uh, completely and send data from one component to another component deep in the hierarchy tree directly. So it would look something like this. We have a component provider uh, somewhere at the top. It maintains its own data store. And then um, components far, far below in this hierarchy can access this data directly from the store. Without context, you would have to you would have to pass this data all the way down through every single probe in that tree, causing explosion in number of probes for those components and basically a headache in refactoring in six months later. From code perspective, it looks something like this. Uh, we have a component, um, it uh, renders context provider and uh, it has a value to which we pass some data, which is our simple data store. And then uh, some other component that is not actually a child of this uh, provider can use uh, this data that we passed as value via context hook. Now, what will happen if uh, something triggers an update of a component with provider, either through its own state change or maybe because its parents just re-renders? Um, well, what will happen is the value will change and then um, Technically, uh, since our non-child component is not a child, it should not re-render itself. But uh, it uses uh, data from this uh, provider. And, uh, so, and, and since the value of the provider changes, then a non-child component and every single component that uses uh, this data will also re-render itself. And then uh, after that, uh, every single of those components will again trigger the recursive rendered cycle of all of the children and so on and so forth until the entire tree again re-renders itself. And again, if we visualize it, uh, it would look something like this. We have a normal tree of uh, our components um, and then we have a context provider sitting somewhere outside. And uh, then one of the smaller components in our hierarchy wants to use data from this context provider. If context data changes, then a uh, component that uses it will uh, change, uh, it will re-render itself, then it will re-render its children and then they children and they children and so on and so forth. Again, the entire tree will re-render itself. And uh, finally, this recursive behavior leads me to the final piece of the re-render puzzles the big uh, re-render smith. Have you ever heard this statement? A component re-renders itself when its props change. It's under like common wisdom. Everyone repeats it, no one doubts it, but it's actually completely not true. 
Take a look at this code, for example. We have a component. It renders uh, a button and the child component. Uh, the component declares a value that's just a variable. And then this value is passed to the child component as a prop and um, buttons on click uh, changes this value. Now, what will happen if I click the button? Nothing will happen really. The value will change, yes. As a, re a result, props uh, on the child component will change. But React doesn't actually monitor props. Uh, changes at all. We need to trigger um, an update of this component explicitly in order for React to notice props change. So in case of this child component, uh, update will not be triggered and the change value will just sit there unnoticed. If a re-render happens uh, in the parent component by some reason, the value will be just wiped out completely. In order for us to preserve it um, and to actually implement this properly, we need to implement this um, with, with the use of state. So let's do exactly that. Uh, rewrite um, those on clicks and uh, value with state. Now, what will happen uh, in this scenario if I click the button? I will trigger a button update. Uh, it will uh, trigger state update as usual. Uh, state value will change. As a result of the state uh, changes, uh, the entire component will re-render itself. We know that already. But then uh, we also know that um, if a component re-renders, it also re-renders its children. So also the child component will re-render re itself. And uh, this uh, leads me to this situation. Whether the child component uh, has value uh, prop or not, whether it's changed or not, it doesn't really matter. If component, if parent component re-renders itself, child will also re-render itself, regardless. The only time when the prop value changes actually matters is when we use some memoization techniques as React Memo or use Memo or use callback then and only then will React stop um, before uh, re-rendering uh, children components and check whether uh, value in props actually changed. Well, that is all for the reasons why components can re-render themselves. Hope you, you found this useful. In the next video, I will be talking about some useful patterns that can stop those uh, chains of re-renders from happening. Spoiler alert, it's not going to be about memoization and react.memo at all. If you feel like reading instead of watching, I write quite a lot about advanced React patterns in my blog. The, links, uh, the link is over there. I have quite a lot of um, articles about re-renders uh, in that blog. Check out video description, they are linked there. Thank you for your time, hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hope I will see you next time and good luck and have a nice day.